In this module, we are going to talk about forms. Now, forms is interesting in Angular 2 because, quite frankly, they have changed everything. So with that said, um, I'll make a bit of a confession, or rather, being that I am a fairly lazy individual that I have found within a form, simply using ng model to bind to an object on your component that you then modify, make your updates, and then when you're ready to do something, then you bind to a click event and you admit it. Emit it. It's not like I said, admit it. Admit it, you admit it. And so this is a minimum viable form. And so when we get to the challenge, if this is approximately what you had, this would be totally fine. Now, in Angular 1, we have ng model as well, and it provides to a data binding, pretty straightforward. But then when we think about it, there's a lot of other things to help us along. So for instance, we had the form controller in Angular 1, and that got created behind the scenes implicitly that every time you created a form, Angular would come or, like swoop back around and create this controller on your form to keep track of that state. And so that still exists. You have now what's called a um, a form control, which you can manage an individual control or an individual input or form element. Then you can bind the, or bring those together and group them together. And so you can have a group control. We just go down here. And so you can have a form control a form group control, and then where I think it gets interesting is then they kind of have bundled that all up into a form builder, which I think is the most interesting. So just to reiterate real quick, if you simply want to get the state or rather the value of a form, you can use ng model. If you want to get the state of it, then you use a form control. If you want to group those together, then you can use a group control. But then, if you want to have more programmatic control, so for instance, applying validations and different things to this group of controls and do more of a data model driven approach to form driven or to forms, then you use Form Builder. And so, this is what we're going to discuss here is Form Control, Form Group Control, Form Builder, and then we'll also talk about how to submit the form as well. Let me just see what I got here. Yeah, all right. So let's just, I'm going to skip the slides for the most part, and we're going to jump straight into the code. So first and foremost, again, I was talking about the minimum viable effort to get the value from an input and move it somewhere else. This is ng model. And we've been kind of playing around with this all day long. Let me just go into the demo here. So now you can see that when I update this, actually, let me bind something here real quick. I'll just go h. Then we're just going to bind to selected item. I really should just turn this into a live template. All right, let's refresh. So here, you can see now we have our object. And then as I type it, things are happening. 
So let's look at the other end of the spectrum, and then we'll kind of work to the middle. So form builder we start out by importing form directives and so just like an angular one when you have a form angular one also has a form directive that goes through and attaches things to it this is where form directives come in so when you import this then anytime you import a directive and it goes in the directives array so any of our components that we've developed that in that template if it recognizes any of those selectors it's going to attach that component to it so in this case with form directives now it's looking and it's saying oh here's this form and because we have form directives on this component it's going to basically extend or augment the standard form just like an angular one and provide additional functionality from here we are injecting form builder and all form builder does is it takes a group of controls and allows you to attach them together so in this case let's just look at the code in the IDE One second here. Let's clear the deck and we So now I've created this kind of wonky object here. I was actually just seeing if I could define the shape of something on the fly, but we have this person. My first name is Luke. My last name is Rubelkey, and this is my top secret password. And now what we're doing is we are generating essentially a new instance of or we're calling form builder and we're saying group these things together in such a way that when it renders, we have this object that we can do things with. So you notice here that I have like ng control and ng control, ng control. And so when I add ng control to an element, so remember, form builder is just a group of controls, that when I add ng control, I now have access to the state of this input via this name here. So Now, when this renders, we can do things like this is no longer valid. And so Form Builder is basically programmatically generating this for us and allowing us to add validations to the fields. Now it is, and you can notice that as well, the input or your button is disabled because you are no longer in a valid state. So I'm going to put in my password again. Now oh, it's 10 characters long. Super. So we'll go back into how we're defining this. So we're creating a group. And we're saying this is first name, last name, and in here, so we want to actually bind to this object and we want to set a validation to this. So in this case, we're saying this is required. You can also group your validators together using validators compose. So you can see here that we're saying not only is it required, but we want a minimum length of 10. Just see if I can hop into here. And then, so individual group, ng control, and then we're actually grouping these together using control group. So this is just a way to kind of organize those. So 
when I first saw this, I was fairly confused. Um, I was like, well, what's going on? Like, what's the point of this? And there was kind of, just like in Angular 1, there's a lot of things kind of happening under the hood. The simplest way to think of it is that you just have a control for each input. You can group those together with a control group. And then you can get the state of that. So for instance, if you look here, we have our form builder, the group that's been returned by form builder. And we're simply saying, is this valid? So this is very similar to Angular 1. When we were doing, we do something like you know, dollar valid or pristine. And so a lot of those properties still come through. And actually, let me just see here real quick. I think I can. I know we have required. Let me just curious real quick, what is on? So required, min length, max length, pattern, null, and then compose that we saw that allowed us to put this together. So these are kind of the basic ones that we had with Angular 1. The upside is, as opposed to Angular 1, where you would have to do like ng hyphen min length and then set that in there on the template, you are now able to actually do this programmatically. 